Okay, Python refactoring exercise part two. Well, I wasn't having planning on having a part two originally, um, but as is often the case when I finished the last recording, something jumped out at me, and um, I thought after looking a little longer, I saw a couple of other things, and I thought it'd be worth doing another segment on that. So the thing that actually jumped out at me initially was that I wasn't using date time anymore, so I didn't need to include that. Uh, so a minor improvement there. And then there was something that had kind of bugged me and I'd forgotten about, so I do like to name things well. So let's call rec our request. There are a few other things that REQ could be in our programming world, so that's good. So I've done that in a couple of naming things here, so that's good. All right, now what, is there anything else? I was looking at this raise exception, and, and it kind of bugged me. Something about that bugged me. It seemed kind of heavyweight. Didn't seem really like it was an, an exception. Now maybe the way you know the land was going to operate within AWS, that that's what we want. Um, but I'm sure we could change the way that we're calling it <clears throat> to not have to go through an exception. So I was thinking, well, what, what's what's really going on here? We're looking for this um, this text, this expected text in this uh, this website. Um, and it's either found or it isn't. So it kind of sounds like a boolean, so yes or no. So let's, let's put in a comment. Let's comment this out for a second. And we could do that in um, Python with a ternary operator. Uh, we usually use Ruby, so I have to adjust my syntax a little bit here. So I think that would be uh, true if this condition here, get rid of the not again, else false so true if condition else false and get rid of that so that's uh, that's the way that I'd really like this function to operate now <clears throat> one of the other things I've mentioned at one point was could this be got any shorter and you know it certainly could so you can see here request which is just that thing there could actually just be put in its one usage right here. Get rid of it. Okay. And then, you know, it's the same thing for web page, right? So we could take that, grab it, not a lovely bin editor, and paste it in there. All right, we've got a pretty, long, a pretty long line now, and we can get rid of that. So there we go. We've got a one-line method that's an unreadable piece of garbage with, like, five close, six close brackets over here. This is, this is kind of crazy. So this is a good example I thought of. Don't go too far with your refactoring to try to make things short for the sake of it. You know, readability is still the main point of doing all the stuff with code that we do because it's for us the humans. So let's go back. Well, it's next to my editor, of course. All editors have a go back. So let's let's back out of some of that craziness that I created. Okay, that's about where I wanted to get to. I'll go forward one step, get rid of that comment. So that's what we got now. We've got a seven line program. Um, let's just read through it quickly because I like to do that just to see how it sounds now. Request equals request of environment of site. Web page equals URL open of request and read it. And let's forget this. We might want to have, I have to check on Python if it's required or whether it's implicit. In Ruby it's implicit a lot of the time. We usually don't have returns. Um, I'm not sure if that's true in Python. In either case, that'll force it. So there we go. Return true of that. Austrian's handful. So, okay, that's the end of the refactoring. Thank you.